Hello friends, I am Satyajit Das and in this video I am going to talk about how I got UK's tier 1 exceptional talent visa which is recently renamed to global talent visa. So a little bit about myself first. I did my undergraduate in mechanical engineering from Indian Institute of Technology Kharagpur back in India. Then I did a master's in Paris uh, at Ecole Polytechnique. Then I did my master's thesis at Caltech in California. And then I did a PhD in Cambridge University in UK. After my PhD, I joined a software company in Cambridge and worked as a software engineer. So what is this tier one exceptional talent visa or global talent visa? So this is one of the best visas to be on in UK. You don't need sponsorship for, from any company. You can work for multiple companies at the same time. You don't need to notify the home office when you change jobs and you're basically free to do whatever you want, except being a sports person or being a doctor in the UK. Or you may choose not to do anything and still be continuing to live in the UK. So practically, this is really the best visa you can be on once you get it. And there are two subcategories of this visa. One is exceptional talent, another is exceptional promise, which are going to be renamed to be global talent or global promise. The only difference is basically on your seniority. So if you are relatively junior, you can apply for the promise one. If you are relatively senior, you can apply for the talent one. And practically, you can apply for permanent residency after three years for the talent one. Whereas for the promise one, you can apply after five years. That's the only difference really. And there used to be a, a number cap of how many people can be given this visa per year. But now that cap has been removed. But interestingly, that cap never really reached, at least for the digital technology sector. You can apply for this visa for five different areas. So in my case, I applied for digital te digital technology sector uh, because I was working as a software engineering and this is basically what it falls under. I could have applied for engineering and science sector as well because my background is in engineering and uh, I did a PhD in engineering as well. But because I was changing my career at least currently to software engineering. That's why it made more sense for me to apply in the digital technology sector. So I will tell you a bit more about how I started. So when I first came across this visa, when it used to be called tier one exceptional talent visa, that was maybe around 2016 or 17. And I looked over its description briefly and I saw the word exceptional. And I thought there's no way I'm exceptional. To me, exceptional meant maybe being top 10 in your field in the world, but I didn't dig it deep enough. But later I realized this is not really the case. You don't really have to be the best in the field. You don't have to be the best in the world to apply for this or to get it. You have to be very good technically and you have to be very good when it comes to taking up leadership positions. So luckily around August of 2018, I stumbled across this visa again when I actually had to go for either tier two through my company or tier one through this visa. So then I went through the description of this visa a bit more carefully and then I saw the things they look for, which is basically 10 supporting documents and a couple of uh, reference letters, which is now they need three reference letters, I think, and uh, a personal statement. So basically, if you can get all these documents ready and these fall under those categories, then you can apply for this visa. So after going through the list of all these expected documents, it made me a bit more confident that I can apply for this visa and stand a good chance of getting it because I knew I can get these documents which fall under these categories so one of the example is have you done something really good in your field which had which has a serious potential impact on your field so in my case i had a publication which was a very good one and that was on a relatively new research field and that definitely has a very good potential impact in future Another example is uh, if you have influenced people by your teaching or if you have really shown leadership skills by sharing your knowledge to a relatively large group of people. So in my case, I had made some open source projects which are freely available for anyone to see and learn from. And I had also written some tutorials based on those open source projects. So once I was somewhat confident that I can uh, get all these documents then the real process started which is actually to finalize your top 10 documents and then actually get them 
So some of these documents might be basically getting recommendation from somebody you have worked with before and that takes time. Also finalizing your top 10 documents that also takes time. So first I just try to make a list of whatever documents that can fall under the required categories. So I ended up with maybe about 15 documents. Then I had to really prioritize which ones are my best 10 documents, which really represent the best side of me. And that took a while. And once I was done with that, then I got those documents, which are basically recommendation from somebody. So in my case, it was one of my professors during my PhD. So who knew the impact of my research. So he was in a better position to judge the work I did during my PhD. One of them was from my one of my senior colleagues at my work who could write about how important my work is for the company and overall for the UK economy. And these can vary from case to case. So in your case, it might be that you worked in a as an intern in a startup somewhere and you made a reasonable impact there. So that can be one of the documents. So I'll put a link to the document list, which goes through all the types of documents they expect and, and they also give enough examples. So once I heard all these documents that took like about two months uh, and I had heard before applying that it takes about two months and I did not believe I thought I can arrange all these in like a couple of weeks, but it takes time and you have to be patient. So once I had all these documents, then I submitted the application, which required a payment of about 400 to 500 pounds. So th there are two phases of this application process. So first phase is to get the endorsement and second phase is actually applying for this visa. So there are several endorsing bodies in UK. So in my uh, area, which is the digital technology sector, uh, the endorsement body is Tech Nation. And so I had to apply for endorsement from Tech Nation. And it took me about a month to get reply from them and to get confirmation about the endorsement from them. And that's it. That's the most important part. And that's the biggest hurdle is to get the endorsement because the next phase, which is basically applying for this visa itself, that is relatively easy. Your main document is basically your endorsement document and few other documents. You don't have to submit a lot of documents at this stage. And because I was on tier four visa before that, uh, as a student, so I had to go back to India to apply for this and I got it within one month as well. And then I came back to UK and got my biometric residence permit, which basically is valid for uh, over five years. So overall, from deciding that I want to apply and actually getting this visa, it, it took me about three to four months. Finally, I would like to give some tips for future applicants for this global talent visa. So first thing you need to be aware of that it is highly doable, even if you don't have the credentials yet. So if you are considering applying in future and you're not confident that your profile is up to the mark, you can still try from now on and reach a good stage in a year, in a year's time, which will enable you to successfully apply for this visa. And how exactly it will vary from case to case. You have to basically go through the list of documents and see which all areas you can easily improve on within one year, uh, which will enable you to apply. It is okay to get overwhelmed at first. So I had gotten overwhelmed when I just saw the word exceptional. And then again, when I went through all the document lists, it's basically 14 to 15 documents. So it's not that easy to arrange and uh, it takes time, but you have to be patient with it. It will just give yourself at least two months to get all the documents ready before you actually apply for this endorsement. If you are stuck at any point or if you have specific questions related to your application, then ensure you get all the advice you can from past applicants. So find them on any forums or apply or ask in any forums and hopefully somebody will help you answer your questions and another point is even if you get rejected for the endorsement in the first attempt that's not the end of the road there are, there are two options in that case you can apply for a re-evaluation of your application or you can apply after a few months as well after making your profile a bit stronger so in some cases they give the rejection letter but they also mention what other documents they expected or what they found lacking in the application and that can give you enough clue to 
how to make a better application next time. So even if you get rejected at the first attempt, that's not the end really. And there are people who have been rejected and they got it in the second attempt. And final advice is just go for it. Just go through these document lists which they expect. And if you have a gut feeling that you have a chance, then most likely you probably do have a chance. So just go for it. And it's the best visa to be on in UK. And one of the good things this visa brings is the access to the network of really smart and successful individuals. And that can be really helpful in your career as well as growth wise. So it is a big enough price to go for it with full force. I'll put a link in the description for the document list they expect. And if you have any questions, then feel free to ask in the comment section. Good luck. Cheers.